नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन इन द न्यू वीडियो व्हिच इज अबाउट द ऑब्स्टेटिकल इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स द टर्म्स दैट आर इंपॉर्टेंट इन ऑब्स्टेटिक्स एंड गायनेकोलॉजी स्पेशली इन ऑब्स्टेटिक्स आई विल बी टेकिंग इन दिस वीडियो सो देयर आर फ्यू टर्म्स दैट एन ऑब्स्टेटिशियन और अ मेडिकल स्टूडेंट शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ एंड दे कैन नॉट अफोर्ड टू से दैट आई डोंट नो अबाउट दीज टर्म्स यू विल बी डेफिनेटली आस्ड एनी ऑफ दीज terms that i am going to explain now in your viva exam this is must if you are uh, ready with the, with these terms you are going to uh, impress your examiner and if you are able to tell about these terms then your viva will proceed to higher level now what is the meaning of term gravida this is the first term that you should be aware about gravida means a pregnant woman gravida means a pregnant woman and it indicates the number of times she has been pregnant including the present pregnancy and it does not uh, get alter by the outcome of her previous or her present pregnancy this is important number of times a woman has been pregnant in her previous life including this pregnancy if she is presently pregnant and ectopic pregnancy a previous ectopic pregnancy is not counted in a gravida when you are telling about and vesicular mole a previous vesicular mole is included in the gravity a uh, gravida uh, a term gravida suppose she second time pregnant at present coming to you with 3 months amenorrhea and she says my first pregnancy it happened to be vesicular mole and uh, i had to undergo suction evacuation so in you will say that she is second gravida why the vesicular mole is included in gravida because it's a intrauterine and the product of conception they are aborted it will amount to be abortion one and with you will then remark it was vesicular mole ectopic pregnancy it is outside the uterine cavity so it will not be included in gravida so number of times woman has been pregnant including the present pregnancy is your gravida if she is third time pregnant then you will say gravida 3 third gravida if she is first time pregnant she is prime gravida if she has never been pregnant she is nulli gravida so this is the importance of gravida now what is parity parity is about the previous past pregnancies outcome when the uh, duration of gestation it passed beyond the period of viability uh, irrespective of what was the outcome whether it was intrauterine fetal death or it was a live birth or it happened to be still birth or it happened to be neonatal death it is uh, not influenced by that so number of times her previous pregnancies not present her previous pregnancies crossed the period of viability this is parity suppose uh, a woman comes to you she is third time pregnant her first pregnancy was uh, uh, for uh, uh, three months abortion and her second pregnancy was full term normal delivery so she will be second gravida she will be second gravida third third gravida para one her first her one pregnancy in her past crossed period of viability living one if the child is alive and abortion one so parity is about past pregnancies not present pregnancies gravida includes present pregnancy also so this is parity now what is antenatal from the time of it is the it is the events that are being occurred in the life of a woman or whatever care you are giving or whatever advice you are giving that is after her conception till the onset of labor it is antenatal then intranatal intranatal is also from the onset of labor till the uh, completion of labor till the completion of labor the third stage of labor is included in intranatal now postnatal from uh, this uh, postpartum period that is uh, after the th- completion of third stage of labor till 28 days it is the postnatal whatever advice you will be giving it will be called as postnatal advice whatever diet 
वॉट एवर एडवाइज रिगार्डिंग हर रेस्ट रिगार्डिंग हर डाइट रिगार्डिंग हर केयर इट विल बी कॉल्ड एज पोस्ट नेटल एंड वॉट इज एल एम पी लास्ट मैंस्ट्रल पीरियड वॉट इज एल एम पी सो हा वुमेन मैंस्ट्रेट फॉर अबाउट थ्री टू फाइव डेज सो विच डे यू विल बी कंसिडरिंग हर एल एम पी इट इज द फर्स्ट डे फर्स्ट डे वेन द पीरियड स्टार्टेड ऑफ हर लास्ट मैंस्ट्रल पीरियड द लास्ट मैंस्ट्रल पीरियड शी हैड एंड द फर्स्ट डे वेन द हर मैं स्टार्टेड इज द लास्ट मैंस्ट्रल पीरियड इट इज द फर्स्ट डे यू विल आस यू विल टेल हर समटाइम्स द वुमेन टेल्स यू डेट शी कंप्लीटेड हर मैंसेज ऑन दिस डेट यू हैव टू आस्क नो आई वॉन्ट टू नो वेन इट स्टार्टेड इफ शी सेज हर पीरियड लास्ट फॉर फाइव डेज एंड शी टेल्स यू वेन दे एंड इट यू कैन डिडक्ट फाइव डेज फ्रॉम दैट एंड इट विल बिकम हर लास्ट मैंस्ट्रल पीरियड एंड वॉट इज अनदर टर्म लास्ट नॉर्मल मैंस्ट्रल पीरियड एल एन एम पी नॉर्मल मैंस्ट्रल पीरियड एल एम पी कुड बी इन अ सिक्स वीक साइकिल इन अ फोर वीक साइकिल इन एट वीक साइकिल और इन रेगुलर साइकिल्स इट विल बी ओनली एल एम पी बट इफ यू आस्क एंड टेल दैट एंड फाइंड आउट दैट शी हैड अराउंड ट्वेंटी एट डेज साइकिल ड्यूरेशन सो यू कैन से दैट हर लास्ट नॉर्मल इंस्टेड ऑफ सेंग दैट हर एल एम पी वॉज सपोज टेंथ जनवरी एंड प्रीवियस मैंस्ट्रल साइकिल्स वर रेगुलर एंड ट्वेंटी एट डेज साइकिल नो यू कैन से वाइल नरेटिंग द हिस्ट्री हर लास्ट नॉर्मल मैंस्ट्रल पीरियड इन दिस यू आर टेलिंग this normal is uh, uh, itself telling that it was a 28 days cycle if you state her last menstrual period if you state that her last normal menstrual period was on 10th january it is understood that her previous cycles were regular you don't need to tell it again while narrating the history now uh, in obstetrics especially when you have lmp you are supposed to calculate her expected date of delivery it is expected always remember this is expected only 4% of women only 4% of women they deliver on this calculated expected date so you have you need to find this expected date of delivery this is calculated by nagelis formula by nagelis formula and which is to her last menstrual period add 9 calendar months and 7 days suppose this lmp is 10 january so 10 cal 9 calendar months it comes out to be 10 october 7 days it comes out to be 17 october her edd is 17 october so this is the uh, one of the example if you get the lmp how do you calculate the expected date of delivery by this this formula is called nagelis and remember only 4% of the women they deliver on this expected date okay now what is lie this this these terms you will be asked when you will be uh, showing the uh, mechanism of normal labor or even in your viva examination definitely you are going to be asked about these terms so learn them by heart try to understand what are the differences so what is lie it is the relationship of fetus to the long axis long axis relationship of long axis of fetus long axis of fetus is we can say spine fetal spine with long axis of maternal spine and better is centralized long axis of centralized uterus 
if uterus is centralized then maternal spine you can take the reference but if the uh, uterus is not centralized so you have to be very careful in my previous video you will get the link in the description box i told you what is the importance of centralizing the uterus once again i am telling you here in short suppose this is a centralized uterus and this uterus is not centralized okay this is the lie how the fetus is inside its long axis relation of the fetus with the long axis of maternal spine can be taken in this case not in this case main is centralized uterus so this uterus is centralized so it is longitudinal lie in this case as this is this is not oblique lie when we will centralize the uterus it comes out to be longitudinal only so this is the importance of centralized uterus so relationship of long axis of fetus with long axis of centralized uterus or maternal spine is called lie so lie could be longitudinal the they both are parallel the long axis of fetus and long axis of centralized uterus they both are parallel it can be longitudinal it can be transverse in this case fetal head is here and breech is this way maternal spine is this way so this is transverse lie they are not parallel this is transverse and anything in between this uh, longitudinal and transverse is oblique so you have three lies now the next is presentation what is presentation it is a part of the fetus which is occupying the lower uterine pole part of the fetus which is occupying the lower uterine poles this is the uterus here is the breech here is the fetal head so this is the cephalic portion this is the podalic portion okay in this case if it is cephalic it is said cephalic presentation the part of the only the part of the fetus which is in the lower uterine segment lower uterine pole it can be cephalic if breech is present it is podalic podalic pole is in the lower uterine segment in case of transverse lie it is usually shoulder it is usually in case of transverse lie it is shoulder so presentation can be cephalic it can be podalic and it can be shoulder so you are now very clear about this that presentation is cephalic vertex is never a presentation woman come woman is in is with vertex presentation the examiner will understand that you are not aware about the basics so you will say cephalic presentation longitudinal lie with cephalic presentation or longitudinal lie with podalic presentation okay this is the way you are going to describe if you are not aware you are going to give wrong answer so presentation now we have seen what is the lie we have seen what is the presentation it is nothing but just the part of the fetus which is in the lower uterine pole okay so now after lie after presentation next term is presenting part now you have come to know that cephalic is the presentation that means head is in the lower uterine segment now which part is overlying the internal os that means presenting part presenting part is the part of presentation what is presentation if suppose it is cephalic if it is cephalic then part on that cephalic presentation which is overlying the uh, inter, uh, internal os which is just above which is present over the internal os which you can feel uh, through the dilated cervix in case of labor so this is the presenting part suppose in cephalic presentation 
it is either vertex most common vertex it can be bro it can be face most common is vertex so vertex is not a presentation vertex is the presenting part so in case of cephalic it is vertex bro or face in case of podalic presentation it can be complete breach we will be discussing in uh, video uh, over breach complete breach or it can be footling complete breach if it is only fo uh, footling or flexed frank sorry frank breach complete is uh, uh, flexed only frank breach in case of frank breach just a brief idea i am giving you the knee joint is not flexed in case of frank breach the knee joint they are extended in case of complete there is flexion at the knee joint also so in case of complete breach what you get you get the uh, uh, this uh, foot also alongside the uh, baby breach and in case of uh, transverse lie it is shoulder usually shoulder or uh, presentation presenting part presenting part is also shoulder and uh, presentation is also shoulder now coming to attitude what is attitude attitude in obstetrics is relationship of different part of fetus to one another relationship of different part of fetus to one another usually it is flexed everything is flexed all the joints are flexed even the neck is flexed and here when we uh, discuss about this when we uh, refer about attitude it is most commonly in case of uh, in case of cephalic present, uh, presentation it is related to neck only so completely flexed is uh, vertex presentation vertex is the presenting part and when sometimes deflexed neck and sometimes even extended neck is present so mostly we talk about the various relationship of parts of fetus to one another so flexion is the universal attitude what is the universal attitude flexion and it is mostly in relation with the neck in cephalic presentations you can get flexed deflexed and extended now what is denominator what is denominator in obstetrics it is the r it is the arbitrary bony fixed point it is the arbitrary bony always remember not muscular bony arbitrary bony fixed part fixed point on the presenting part presenting part which is overlying the internal loss Bo arbitrary bony fixed point on the uh, presenting part which comes in relation with the maternal pelvis this denominator we use it to define which uh, what is the position of the presenting part uh, as compared to the maternal pelvis so in case of vertex it is occiput in case of face it is mentum in case of breech it is sacrum and in case of shoulder it is acromion so these are the denominator arbitrary bony fixed point on the presenting part by which we tell its relation to the maternal pelvis example when we say right occipito posterior that means 
that uh, that occiput where it is lying this is the pelvis maternal pelvis suppose this is her right anterior this is right posterior this is left posterior and this is left anterior she is lying on her uh, dorsum and we are seeing this so when this occiput is present in the right posterior part right occipito posterior so here it will be that means the occiput is this way or we can say that that sacro anterior in case of sacro anterior if we say we have to tell about the position of the fetus inside the maternal pelvis again so sacrum is anteriorly placed and this way so this is the importance of denominator arbitrary bony fixed point on the presenting part now what is position just now i told you that relationship of denominator to different quadrants of the maternal pelvis just now i told you about the uh, this maternal pelvis this is again right anterior this is right posterior left posterior left anterior so wherever that denominator we just described about is present is facing if it is facing this way it is facing this way this way or this way so it is the relationship of the denominator in respect to the mater the various quadrant of maternal pelvis example uh, left occipito anterior is most common the uh, one example is right occipito posterior or sacro anterior so these are the few terms that you should be aware about if you are an obstetric student uh, medical student ayurvedic or homeopathic or nursing student you cannot afford to miss the miss these terms in your exam particularly if you are unable to give uh, answers to these simple question your viva will not be continued and uh, you will be considered a bad student who is not careful about these small things so if you like this video please subscribe to the channel for new videos and uh, share the video and uh, if you have any uh, queries about the topic do write in the comment box i will be happy to reply thank you